Welcome again. Right now we're at Acts chapter 28, the last chapter and the last portion of the book of Acts. We're going to be talking about Paul arriving at Rome and we're going to be talking about how Paul preached exclusively from the Old Testament. So we're going to start at verse 11 and we're going to read right through to the end of the chapter, verse 31. After three months, we set sail in a ship of Alexandria, which had wintered in the island, whose sign was the Twin Brothers. The Twin Brothers referred to the sons of Seuss, which was considered to be protectors of sailors. Touching at Syracuse, we stayed there three days. From there, we circled around and arrived at Regium. After one day, a south wind sprang up, and on the second day, we came to Putoli, where we found brothers. Brothers here refers to other people that believe in Yeshua the way they do, brothers in the faith. And we're entreated to stay with them for seven days. So we came to Rome. From there, the brothers, when they heard of us, came to meet us as far as the market of Appius and the three taverns. When Paul saw them, he thanked God and took courage. When we entered into Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard. But Paul was allowed to stay by himself with the soldier who guarded him. After three days, Paul called together those who were the leaders of the Jews. When they had come together, he said to them, I, brothers, though I had done nothing against the people, that is the Jewish people, obviously, or against the custom of our fathers. So Paul said very specifically here, he did not do anything, including teaching. He did not do anything or teach anything against the Jews or against the customs of the Jewish fathers. That is very, very important to understand. You see, a lot of Christians, they use Paul's letters, they use Paul's writings against the Jews or against the customs of the Jews. But obviously here, Paul was not against the Jews or against the customs of the Jews whatsoever. So he said, though I had done nothing against the people or the customs of our fathers, was still delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who, when they had examined me, desired to set me free, because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spoke against it, I was constrained to appeal to Caesar, not that I had anything about which to accuse my nation. For this cause, therefore, I ask to see you and to speak with you. For because of the hope of Israel, I am bound with this chain. The term here, hope of Israel refers to the resurrection. This is vital to understand Paul's heart, Paul's mind in his epistles, okay? Because the term, the hope of Israel or the resurrection is the only thing the Jews had against Paul. Paul did not preach against Torah. Paul did not tell anybody to reject or throw away Torah or the customs of the Jews. Very significant and very important to understand this. Because you see, again, uh, most Christians, they use Paul's teaching against the Jews, against Torah, against the law of God, against the customs of the Jews. But Paul did nothing, said nothing, taught nothing against the Jews or against the customs or against the Torah. Or else, obviously, if that were the case, that would be their primary gripe against him. That would be their primary cause of persecuting him. But that was not the case. Because again, if you were to look back in the book of Acts, especially Acts chapter 15, Acts chapter 21, Paul proved and the apostles proved they went by Torah. They went by Torah 100%. They did not preach against it. They did not do anything against it. They had nothing against Torah whatsoever, as most Christians do today. The only thing they had against Paul was that he preached the resurrection, which some of them, i.e. the Sadducees, did not believe in the resurrection because you see the Sadducees believed in only what they interpreted 
out of the books of Moses. Anything else was thrown away, okay? Everything else was thrown away because that was not considered to be authentic canon in those days, okay? Just like how the Apocrypha is to the Christians today, okay? Same thing. The Sadducees were like, well, that's not scriptural. That's not biblical, you know, so to speak, you know, the resurrection. That's how they looked at it. So that's the only thing they had against Paul, okay? Even the Pharisees didn't, didn't have anything against Paul. It was the Sadducees because the Pharisees believed in the resurrection. Verse 21, they, speaking of the Jews there, the leaders of the Jews there said to him, said to Paul, we neither received letters from Judea concerning you, nor did any of the brothers come here and report or speak any evil of you. But we desire to hear from you what you think. For as concerning this sect, it is known to us that everywhere it is spoken against. When they had appointed him a day, many people came to him at his lodging. He explained to them, testifying about God's kingdom and persuading them concerning Jesus, both from the law of Moses and from the prophets, from morning until evening. This was the text that Paul used to preach Jesus. This was the text that Paul used to preach Christianity. The law of Moses and the prophets, okay? Today, Christians call it the Old Testament. That is the text that Paul used to preach Christianity. And there are so many churches, in fact, almost every church today claims to be the biblical book of Acts kind of church. Listen, pastor, listen, priest, bishop, Listen, church leader, if you are the book of Acts kind of church, then you would preach Christ. You would preach your Christian message from the Old Testament alone. That's how Paul preached. It doesn't say Paul preached from the book of John or from the book of Matthew. It doesn't say that Paul preached from the book of Romans. No, he preached from the law of Moses and the prophets, i.e. Old Testament. Verse 24, some believed the things which were spoken and some disbelieved. When they didn't agree among themselves, they departed after Paul had spoken one word. Quote, the Holy Spirit spoke rightly through Isaiah, Yeshayahu, the prophet, to our fathers saying, go to this people and say, in hearing you will hear, but will in no way understand. In seeing you will see but will in no way perceive. For this people's heart has grown callous. Their ears are dull of hearing. Their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and would turn again. There we go. That is repentance. That's where it's all at. Repentance, the first word that Jesus preached, the first word the apostles preached. And here in the book of Acts, the first thing that Peter said and what Paul said, God commands everyone everywhere to repent. And here in the last chapter of Acts, as we close, talking about repentance. And would turn again, and then I would heal him. You see, a lot of Christians are looking for healing and miracles and such, but they don't talk about repentance. First comes true repentance, then comes true miracles. Be it known to you that the salvation of God is sent to the nations and they will listen. When he had said these words, the Jews departed, having a great dispute among themselves. Now the NU manuscripts omits this verse. Paul stayed two whole years in his own rented house and received all who were coming to him, preaching God's kingdom, in other words, preaching God's rule and reign in your life, and teaching the things concerning the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness, without hindrance. And that concludes our reading. And don't miss the letters of Paul. Some of the most disputed, some of the most controversial things in the Bible is what Paul said. We are going to tackle it. We are going to deal with it. Don't miss it. Until then, seek God with all your heart and you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. 
Love you guys.